What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Or welcome if it's your first time here. If you like videos about prepping, survival, self reliance, and other related topics, then be sure to subscribe. Turn notifications on be notified each time that I upload a new video. I know this is one of those videos that's going to get a lot of the fear-mongering comments from a lot of people who don't understand what we're trying to do as preppers. If they're prepping, they would understand all these concepts already, you would think. But I still yet get so many fear-mongering comments that it's kind of ridiculous, especially now with everything that's going on. But if you mentioned things like your neighbors coming to take your food, the local authorities coming to take your food, and having to defend yourself from those people or having to take measures to retain what you stockpiled yourself from these outside threats that are trying to come and take what you have because they have failed to do any because they have failed to prepare themselves. And a lot of people will say that's just fear mongering, it's never going to happen, it's never going to get that bad. Before it gets that bad, the rapture's going to happen, or we're going to elect some politician and fix everything. It's not going to get that bad. So they don't want to think the possibilities of that actually happening. However, if you look at it logically, and if you look at history, then it very definitely could happen. It's not a guarantee, thankfully, and things would have to get pretty bad for that to start happening as far as coming with force. Now, it doesn't have to get that bad if the people coming are trying to break into your home when you're gone, for example, steal what you have, or trying to break into your barn, your outside sheds and things to steal what you have. That can happen with just a slight economic downturn or just someone having a hard time or some drug addict trying to get something to sell to take to the pawn shop to sell to get some more drugs with. Well, what we're talking about in this video is something like a serious situation, like a hyperinflation type scenario, food shortages, uh, major natural disasters could cause this to happen and if people knows that you have food stockpiles and they haven't done anything if they've been the ones who are mocking who are saying that nothing bad is going to happen because you know the rapture is going to happen before anything real bad happens they're going to be the first ones at your door trying to take what you have and usually they will come first asking and begging then if you don't give they will come back with more people more than likely they'll gather more people together tell them what you have and they'll come try to take what you have that's why it's extremely important to take measures to protect yourself from such threats and guys to make matters worse in some jurisdictions some states some cities they're actually telling you to leave your vehicles unlocked leave your windows rolled down leave your car keys in your truck and your automobiles leave your doors of your outside sheds unlocked don't protect yourself don't try to defend your property let the thieves come in and take what they want and move on out and you know we have a lot of people coming across our southern border and our northern border and these people are going to be here also having to have substance wanting food to eat and if something happens to cut that supply chain off they definitely could be coming to your house to try to take what you have and so could your neighbors so could your local government you know if your local government if there's a disaster emergency declared your local police could be the ones coming to your home if they know you if they know you have anything coming to your home trying to take what you have probably for their own families However, they could be trying to take what you have to redistribute to the people in the neighborhood who hasn't done anything themselves. So there's all kinds of threats that could possibly happen and more than likely would if the situation gets dire enough. You know, if you look at how fast food empties out of the supermarkets, the shelves go empty. If there's going to be a snow here, you'll see the shelves within a couple of hours of you know the news broadcast there's going to be a major snow people hit that supermarket and they will take all the bread all the beer all the water all the pop pretty much everything and clean that out within hours and you'll have nothing and but they don't go out and try to steal things because they know that it's going to be a short-lived disaster however take something like the power grid went down from a major cyber attack which i think is more than likely going to happen power grid goes down communications goes down you know kind of like the uh movie uh leave the world behind major cyber attack takes everything down and people would go ape shit crazy trying to take what you have especially if they know that you have anything and you know 
the authorities will still be trying to be the authorities. And if you try to defend yourself against these people trying to come and take what you have, you only have to also deal with legal consequences from the authorities because you're trying to protect yourself and your family. But it seems like the court system nowadays is more interested in protecting the criminals. So it's something to keep in mind. You know, there is such a thing as shoot and shovel. Not recommending anything, just saying that that's some people's plan. Anyway, the guys knowing that the possibility definitely exists for people coming trying to take what you have, you need to figure out how you're going to protect what you have. And we've already talked about, you know, defending your property, defending what you have with force. Or we kind of hinted at that just a minute ago. Also, you need to have secure food storage. Think about secret hiding places. I'm not going to tell you secret hiding places here in this video because I'll be the point in that because then everyone will know about the secret hiding places. But you can figure out places in your home, hopefully, places outside your home, maybe bury some supplies in the ground. Figure out, look at what you have now and see how can I use my current surroundings, my home, my outbuildings, my property. How can I use this? to put in secure food stores locations hidden away that no one can find. You know, if they come in and take some of what you have, you might actually give some people that comes in after a superior force some of what you have and hope they will go away and you still have some hidden secure locations. That way they can't take everything that you have. Hopefully it doesn't happen and that's up to you if you want to defend yourself to start out with or if you want to have some on hand ready to give out when someone comes and say you don't have any more, you're busted, that's it. While you still yet have some hidden away in secret locations. Lots of things can be done to hide food storage in secret locations. But some of the best is actually underground. You know, if you have like a building, an outbuilding, you can take and make a secret door in the bottom of that for this is just, just, just an example. And you could dig out. You could have a you could theoretically dig a root cellar out, have it fixed, have it ready, and then put a building on top of that with a floor that looks like it's just a floor. If you can go in, all you see is a floor with other things on top of that and a secret compartment. Open that up and you go down into your root cellar, into your storage. Same thing with the outside garage, something like that. There's all kinds of ways to store things and even cheaper ways than that. You know, false walls and things. There's all kinds of ways to store things. I can't get into it here in this video too close, but you can get books about secret, secret storage places. You can do searches online. And what you might not want to use exactly what they are, how they are telling you to do this or what they're telling. Maybe you can get some better ideas from what they're saying because a lot of people may have these books about secret hiding places. They might go online and watch videos, and if you're doing the same thing they're saying in those videos, then it's possible these same people, not likely, but possible, these same people that are trying to come and take what you have, have watched the same videos, and they know where you've hidden things there. But the most important thing is to keep your mouth shut about your secret hiding places. You don't want to show anyone where you have your food stockpiled and your food hidden. But definitely, don't have everything just in the room, in a closet, everything you have stored like that because it can definitely be taken very, very quickly. It can be found very, very quickly. You can defend yourself, and that's definitely something I would do is I would defend what I have, my property, with force. No questions asked. But, you know, still, yeah, it's a good idea to have, like I said, secret hiding places, secret food storages. And you want to have multiple locations, hopefully. You may want to have, if, you, if it's possible, to have some away from your home. Now you can make uh, cash tubes from PVC pipe, get six inch PVC pipe, put a cap on one end, a clean out adapter on the other end. You can have those six foot long, five, six foot long, however long you want to make those. And you can store those, you know, full of long-term food storage. And take a, take a manual post hole digger, dig the, hole in the ground, put your food in that, and put that in there and cover that up. And that is definitely secure food storage that'll last for many, many years, especially if it is, you know, long-term storage foods like freeze-dried foods. Put that in there, bury that in the ground, and make sure you know where it is because that's easy to lose that. The same thing can be done if you're trying to hide, you know, firearms, for example. 
if you're trying to hide anything you want hidden you can bury that underground in secret locations pretty much anywhere and it's going to be about impossible to find unless someone tracks you back to that or you tell someone so you want to make sure you know where it's at but no one else does unless that person is someone you trust completely and fully but having multiple different stores locations is definitely recommended and guys i know you don't want to hear this but something else that's extremely important is having a community especially having close-knit neighbors who are prepared also most people won't but hopefully you do some of the best neighbors you can have in my opinion is family and in this area you'll have a lot of family members living in the same area they don't live far apart so you pretty much have your survival group right there and hopefully that family survival group is prepping also but they can definitely come to your aid to help you defend what you have if they also know that they're relying on what you have also from they can help you defend what you have from the outside force you know you have your family if you have you know say you're here and you have aunts uncles cousins brothers and they're all living in the same couple of miles and if something happens someone's trying to come and take what you have in a worst case scenario you have two-way communications handheld radios gmrs for example you can holler on that and they'll be there hopefully armed and ready to go to help you out to defend what you have especially if if they're, if they're prepping that's great but if they're not you can put back some extra for them and they will definitely try to protect you and what you have because their survival is dependent on that also neighbors if you have good neighbors that's a plus because you know if you have outsiders coming through trying to take what you have your neighbors hopefully it's no guarantees but hopefully will be armed and help you to defend the community against these outside forces community is a strong situation to be in a good strong community and do everything you can to build that community but like i said i think the best survival group the best prepping group is a large family if you have family living around where you do within a few miles you can get a hold of your family when you need help like I said, two-way radios or whatever, and I already have it figured out, code words and things with your family members, and they can be there in a few minutes to help you defend your property, defend what you have. Plus, you can be there, you can be there to help them defend themselves also and defend what you all have. You can pull resources together. Great. And a family unit, a good family unit, is going to be much better than, you know, some random survival group, which is everyone thrown in, who has no blood alliances. Family will screw you over, it happens. However, outsiders will screw you over even quicker than family will in my experience. And guys, another thing that you can do when it comes to securing your food supplies is actually not stockpiling, but it's actually growing your own. You'll need to stockpile the right seeds, of course, and have gardening tools and skills to grow. But if you can plant you know, your garden, you can produce and reproduce a lot of your food. You can have fresh, vegetables you can put in fruit trees you can have fresh fruit like apple trees for example peach trees you can get some honeybees you can get some chickens for eggs and meat you can get some domestic rabbits you can learn how to hunt you can learn how to forage that way if you have all this stuff going on plus your food storage you can extend that food storage out much much longer than what you say so you have a year supply of food storage and you're actually that's all you have you have a year supply of food storage However, if you have a year supply of food storage, plus you are gardening, you have chickens, you have honeybees, you can hunt, you can fish, you can extend that year supply of food storage out to three or four years because you're growing a lot of your own food. So that's definitely a good position to be in. And people, a lot of people won't be trying, they can at certain times of the year when it's harvest time, they could be trying to get into your garden to steal what you have, but they're more likely to be trying to get food that's already ready to go, like canned food, for example, long-term storage foods than they are garden produce that's planted in the garden. Plus, garden produce usually comes off at a certain time, so they have to steal right at a certain time period. Within a few weeks, they're to get the produce when it's ready to be harvested. But it definitely could happen. That's why you can also look into things like planting a secret garden. There's books on this. I think one of the books is actually called uh, The Secret Survival Garden, I think that it's called. And it tells about how to plant and, and hide what you're planting and look like just everything else. But it's actually, you know, a food forest, a food crop. 
The guy, same guy also has, uh, I'll link down below to these books. I forget the name of the books. I have all, I think there's three books, and I have all those books that he written, that he wrote. But I can't remember the name. It's The Secret Garden, I think it is, and The Secret Greenhouse. And uh, he's got another one that's about how to raise animals, I think it is, secretly, like chickens and things like that, and keep it hidden. Good book, something to think about to keep your food storage more secure and to keep your food storage production more secure. Anyway, if you have any other ideas, leave in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'm the Creek Warm out here, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.